Hi, I'm Steve here from the GI department. Today I'm going to show you some of the features of the Olympus GIF H190 scope. Now, the most noticeable difference between this scope and the 180 series is the electrical connector. But uh, I'm going to start up here with a handle. The control handle is just like the other control handles on the 140, 160, and 180 series. There is almost no difference whatsoever in this control handle. Still has the up down lever, the left right lever. So if I hold the bending section here, you can see we can go up right left down of the locks here so I can lock into the position I want. And uh, these, of course, we leave uh, in the free position when it's, not, when it's not in use. Also has these four buttons up here. The one next to your thumb, if you're handling the scope, the one next to your thumb takes pictures. The one on the top takes NBI, uh, or gives you an NBI image. It's narrow band imaging. It's a light spectrum that helps us to both detect polyps and it also helps in the diagnosis of Barrett's esophagus. This uh, next button down here, button number two, is um, used for magnification. It's either 1.0, 1.5, or 2.0 on your magnification. And this button right here, the big one right above where the valves go in, that button is uh, a, for a still frame. Uh, you notice the ports here, just like the other scopes, these ports uh, hold different valves. This valve, for, for example, is the air water valve. It's, notice it's got a blue uh, end on it. If I just put my finger over it uh, during use, while we're pumping CO2 through the scope instead of air, uh, when I do that, in fact, I, when I put that my finger over it, I'll be able to feel the CO2 pressure. And when I do that, that allows a nozzle on the end of this distal tip of the scope to insufflate where we're at. So it can insufflate uh, the uh, lumen or organ that we're trying to visualize. Uh, if I press the button all the way down, it's going to send um, water squirting from the nozzle over the top of the lens to keep the, uh, so you can see where you're going. It, it's like a windshield wiper, basically. Uh, the other valve up on top here, notice it has red dot on the end, that's suction. When you push that in, uh, the button in, that allows the 2.8 millimeter port, uh, working channel on here to suction up fluids wherever uh, you may be in the body if they're in the way. Or you can suction out the CO2 as well. It works very well. Okay, uh, the other point of this control handle is it has the biopsy port, uh, as we call it, that enters into the working channel. Starts here, goes out 103 centimeters to this distal tip of the scope. I'm gonna put the cap on here so you can see what it looks like. This is the uh, semi-disposable biopsy port. Uh, has a little cap here. We push that cap down on it to ensure that CO2 doesn't come back up out of here when we're trying to insufflate. It also allows us to put in biopsy forceps, snares, and lots of other instruments that will fit into a 2.8 channel uh, without losing any CO2. And also, if I pop this open, I can fit a bander handle on here if I'm going to be doing any um, banding of esophageal, esophageal varices. Uh, so we have a insertion tube here. The insertion tube or working length of this, as like I said, is around 103 uh, centimeters. Uh, you can see it's graduated. And then we have the bending section here that um, is very flexible. The C cap up here, uh, it's amazing how much it can, can, can get into a small area here, a small space. But we have the nozzle that squirts the water over the uh, lens. 
and insufflates. We have the camera lens right here, uh, which is uh, the largest, the largest glass portion that you see at the top. And that's because it's the lens to the camera. And then the two smaller glass looking areas here uh, are where the fiber optic, uh, fiber optic lights come out. It's like two headlights on the end of the scope allows you to illuminate the area you're looking at so you can visualize it more clearly. The, the, the large hole here, 2.8 millimeter working channel. That's for pushing instruments through and sucking uh, fluid through. And last but not least, there's a tiny hole right here that you probably can't see. That's for irrigation. This uh, has an irrigation port on it. Uh, auxiliary water inlet is what it says here, this little, this little fitting. And there's a water pump activated by a foot pedal. And that water pump enables the physician or endoscopist to uh, pump water through here that will come out the end of the scope. It looks kind of like a, a squirt gun, basically. Uh, while I have this up, this, um, this is a universal or umbilical or light guide tube uh, uh, portion of the scope. I've, I've heard it called by many names. Uh, but on the end of this is the electrical connector. And, but it connects more than just electrical items. It also connects the suction to this suction barb here. There's the water inlet that we just spoke about. This gadget here, so we can do leak testing. This connects to a, a pump that, in, uh, that inflates the scope with air. So when we put it under water for cleaning, we can see if there's gonna be, if we see bubbles coming up, we know there's a leak in the scope. On the other side here, we have the air and our, our CO2 and water inlet. Then CO2 will pump the water through here too. So it's kind of kind of interesting how it all works together. Pretty impressive piece of uh, technology. You'll notice these little contacts that go around the circumference of this kind of a plug, uh, also on this smaller part here. And those are the connections that connect up the image uh, from this camera down here on the end. It goes into the video processor so we can see it up on the video monitor. It also connects all these little buttons up here for your magnification, for narrowband imaging, for taking pictures, all of those things. And it also feeds back information to the uh, video processing, uh, video processor, uh, how many times the scope is used, what the identification marks are on the scope. When we plug this in, it tells us everything about the scope on the uh, video monitor in about the first 10 seconds. Okay, and lastly, oh, I'm gonna, for, almost forgot. This is the light guide tube here. This connects to fiber optics inside the scope that, that feed the fiber optic lights at the distal tip. This is called an air pipe, the smaller piece of tubing here and that's to push air through the scope when, when we're cleaning it. Over here, attached to this handle, you may have wondered what this was, this little white tag identifies the scope, tells me when it was last processed on high level disinfected, and the time that it was done on that particular date. So I know I have a, a paper trail, because uh, this is all documented uh, by the scope techs who are specially trained to process scopes. This is all documented about this scope, when it was cleaned, where, what time, and, all, and the uh, type of scope it is. This bag here, we, used, we, we call them avocado bags, but they're little green net bags. And there is what we're, where we put our valves. Now, the valves are um, designated for this scope only. In other words, each scope that we have has its own set of valves that go with it. So that are, that are only, that only changes if one wears out or needs to be replaced for some reason. Uh, but we have the same set of valves for each, I mean the, uh, for each scope has its own set of valves. And all right, so that about does it for the Olympus H, uh, GIF H190 scope. Um, I'll just, uh, Couple of quick things here, 2.8 millimeter uh, working channel, 
uh, digital, the uh, distal tip diameter here is 9.2 millimeters. Uh, the insertion tube is 9.2 millimeters, and the working length is 102 centimeters. And it's, uh, this is a fantastic scope, particularly for doing diagnostic screening and for several therapeutic uses. Later, I'll be moving on to colonoscopes.